Remember the days when every now and then Toyota CEO Akio Toyoda was criticized for his, let's say, stubborn refusal to accept the new reality? Everyone was convinced of the all-electric future, so Toyota was seen as a company that wouldn't survive this EV transition. But suddenly, things changed, and today no one talks about quick electrification anymore. Toyota is fully enjoying the moment, not just because of record high sales numbers, but also because it proved it was right about everything. Record high sales and profit that Toyota is the world's largest car maker, we already knew. For years in a row, the Japanese car maker has been a dominant force when it comes to sales numbers. But with every new year, it seems like it's pushing the limit even further. Last year, the company didn't just mark record high sales figures, but also made record high profits, which is completely opposite to most other car makers in the world, because it seems like everyone else has been stuck with EV development, which costs a lot and doesn't bring back any profit. Consequently, legacy car makers are losing money. Instead of quick electrification, they are losing money, and they're losing a lot. Just take a look at the American car makers GM and Ford. Both companies have been pushing EVs pretty hard lately. The goal was to electrify America in a record short period and become leaders in the segment. But with the current growth rate as well as the fact that the production is far from optimized, both companies are actually losing billions. Ford, for example, lost over 5 billion on EVs in just the last year, while GM's finances are in such bad shape that the company is forced to postpone production of key all-electric models and buy back shares just to keep investors calm. On the other hand, Toyota and its now chairman Akio Toyoda are fully enjoying the moment. The company continues to dominate the market, with 11.2 million vehicles sold only in the last year. But that's not all, the profit margins are record high. So while most competitors are losing money on failed EV projects, Toyota earned more than ever. According to the official data, in the last nine months of the last year, between March and December, the company made a $27 billion profit. That's two times more compared to the same period a year before. And besides such increase, another good indicator of Toyota's impressive growth is that, during the same period, the EV leader Tesla managed to increase its profit by no more than 19% over the last year, which would be around $15 billion in absolute numbers, so it's pretty clear that Toyota is currently leading the race. Pulling the EV handbrake Until recently, the whole EV story seemed so idyllic. The sales numbers were rising at a rapid pace, while EVs were improving in every aspect, including range, charging speed, and overall convenience. Logically, authorities from all over the world were expecting customers to embrace the new technology and contribute to the green agenda, to reach zero emissions in a short period. In North America, the year-over-year -year growth used to be over 90%, and based on these numbers, Biden's administration made a plan to electrify the United States in less than a decade. Last year, the EPA came up with a proposal that would make 67% of new cars electric by 2032. But soon after, EV growth started to slow down. The last year was around 50%, while the first quarter of 2024 ended with a pretty modest 15% growth. Then, Ford and GM entered some pretty serious financial difficulties, which altogether made the EPA offer a new proposal this year. The new goal is to make one-third of the market all-electric. With the new emissions requirement, it became obvious that it's not all that easy to push out all those internal combustion engines from the roads, especially in the most critical segments, such as pickup trucks, which turned out to be quite underperforming when equipped with an all-electric powertrain. Instead, it's now clear that this and other segments need to make baby steps to achieve sustainability and focus on hybrid technology first. The problem with the initial plan was the fact that it was based on a trend that lasted just a few years. To make an adequate strategy, you need to take a much longer period into account. Otherwise, frequent revisions of plans are required, like what happened recently when the EPA came up with a new proposal. Now, the emission standards are lower. They went down from 56% reduced average emissions to 49%. And while that may not seem like a big deal to you, it's a lot in practice. This reduction will be enough for most car makers to avoid initially planned hefty fines on emissions. 
American car makers felt relief in particular because full-size and heavy-duty pickups can carry one pretty much in the same way with large displacement gas and diesel engines. Full electrification is still a ways away. This is the era of hybrids. This relatively short experience with electric cars taught us that car makers still need to address so many different things to make the use of electric cars convenient and cost-effective. Electric cars are still expensive but don't give much in return. Their range is still limited while charging takes too much time. Also, the infrastructure is far from perfect, and the latest studies also show that electric cars are significantly less reliable than gas-powered vehicles. In other words, electric cars are still not good enough to make a majority of consumers embrace the new technology. Practical reasons are still on internal combustion engine side. So, the aforementioned slowdown of EV growth doesn't come as a surprise. As mentioned, the last year ended with a 50% increase while the current growth rate is at a pretty modest 15%. Meanwhile, hybrids are on a swing. Last year, they ended with a 63% growth and the same trend continues through 2024. Already today, hybrids are more popular than EVs considering that they account for more than 9% of the new car market in the US. Meanwhile, we're still waiting for EVs to break the 8% barrier, something that was expected long ago. It turns out that hybrids are, at the moment, way more appealing for several reasons, starting from the fact that they're more convenient. Hybrids are simpler to use and don't bring range and charging anxiety like electric cars do. Moreover, they're cheaper and significantly more reliable according to the latest surveys. Last but not least, they also bring that green factor, considering that they pollute less than their gas-only counterparts. And with the growing popularity, it's easy to guess who benefits the most. Toyota has been the industry leader in hybrid technology for decades and logically now marks record high numbers. Only in the last year, it managed to sell nearly 3.5 million hybrid cars, and the latest trends suggest this number could only grow in the future. This particularly refers to North America, considering that the new Camry is here, available only in a hybrid variant. The same is expected with the RAV4, which is coming next year. And as we're talking about some of the most popular models on the market, there's no doubt that they'll contribute to the overall growth of hybrids a lot. Would you rather buy a proven Toyota hybrid or overpay for an unproven electric car? We'd love to hear your opinions, so make sure to write them in the comments. Multifaceted approach For a long time, EV enthusiasts have been accusing Toyota of being retrograde, for refusing to accept that EVs are the future. But the fact is that the Japanese carmaker has never been against electric cars. Moreover, it even launched a couple of them. No, this company was against that unison approach that sees no alternative. Toyota believes in a diversity of technologies in a multifaceted approach. The former CEO, now chairman, Akio Toyoda said many times that zero emissions can be achieved in so many different ways. For that reason, Toyota has been developing all kinds of alternative technologies. First, there was a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, a design that was also based on electric motors but used hydrogen instead of batteries. Then, the company developed an internal combustion engine that burns hydrogen. Such engines have already been in the testing phase, even participating in various endurance races. Clearly, Toyota's ready for the future, no matter which technology prevails. Lately, it's been working on another alternative technology, an engine that runs on liquid ammonia. So with all these engines and technologies in mind, it becomes clear why Toyota claims that EVs are not without alternatives, as some like to say. EV technology is far from perfect. One of the key reasons why customers prefer hybrids over electric cars is because EV technology is still far from perfect. Yes, EVs offer incredible acceleration and performance, but other than that, is there any advantage over hybrids or even gas-only cars? The reasons are numerous, but let's start with the weakest spot, autonomy. Although EVs have notably improved lately, their range is still far from being adequate for anyone who practices relatively long journeys. Urban rides work just fine, but if you plan to use an EV for long trips, be prepared for more frequent stops to recharge, which leads us to the next weak spot of electric cars. First of all, the charging network is far from developed enough, especially in rural areas. Secondly, charging is still time-consuming, as even the most advanced EVs need at least 20 minutes to get to 80 
80% with DC fast chargers. And thirdly, public chargers are unreliable according to the most recent surveys. All of this makes everyday life with electric cars quite complicated. Then there's the cost. Electric cars are still more expensive than hybrids, notably so. Moreover, insurance premiums are also notably higher, and running costs can also be very high for anyone who's relying primarily on public chargers. Finally, EVs are significantly less reliable than gas-powered cars. On the other hand, Toyota's hybrids are even more reliable than their gas-only counterparts, because Toyota engineers managed to simplify this level of technology to absurdity, where a typical Toyota hybrid features fewer parts than a typical gas-only vehicle. With all we've said in this video, it doesn't surprise that Akio Toyota and the crew have gained such wide support. Simply put, they're strongly opposing this fast electrification imposed by governments around the world, which completely neglects the needs of customers. Customers want affordable and reliable solutions, but instead, they're forced to buy expensive and not-so-practical electric cars. Toyota's management has always been against such an approach and has always been insisting on an EV strategy that would be driven by customers, not politicians. Do you agree with Toyota's approach towards electrification? Should buyers decide which green technology is the best? Will EVs ever be able to become a dominant force on the market? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.